uh, welcome to the sixth session of uh, V2E Shikshan program in Engineering Chemistry for Module 4. So, in our fifth session, we discussed uh, about uh, the production of hydrogen by making use of water and uh, solar energy and also the application of uh, the hydrogen in hydrogen oxygen fuel shell. Later we also discussed the working of uh, PV shell, how the PV shell that is photovoltaic shell is constructed, how it works, what are the merits of uh, photovoltaic shells. So today I would like to discuss the demerits of solar energy. So it has some drawbacks, it has some demerits. So what are the demerits of the solar energy? The first one cost. So the initial cost of uh, purchasing the solar system is uh, quite high. This includes paying for solar panels, inverters, batteries, wiring and the installation. Nevertheless, solar technology is constantly developing so that it is safe to assume in future the price may go down. The second demerits of the solar energy is water dependent, sorry, weather dependent. Although solar energy can still be collected during cloudy and uh, rainy days, the efficiency of solar panels are dependent on sunlight to effectively gather solar energy. Therefore, a few cloudy or a rainy days can have a noticeable effect on the energy system. You should also take into account that solar energy cannot be collected during the night. On the other hand, if you are in need of water heating solution to work at night, or during winter time, if you are in need of a solar energy system, so thermodynamic panels are an alternative consideration. And the third demerits of a solar energy, that is solar energy storage is quite expensive. So solar energy has to be used right away or it can be stored in large batteries. So these batteries used in off the grid solar system can be charged during the daytime so that the energy is used at night. So this is a good practice for using solar energy. All the day long, but it is also quite expensive. In most of the cases, it is smart to just use solar energy during the daytime and take the energy from the grid during the night. You can only do this if your system is connected to the grid. The energy demand is uh, usually high during the daytime, so we can meet most of it with solar energy. And the fourth demerits of the solar energy, use of lot of space. The more electricity, if we want to produce, more solar panels are to be connected. If you want uh, more energy, more panels are to be connected. The solar panels requires a lot of space 
and some roots are not big enough to fit the number of solar panels that you would like to have. The alternative measure is to install some of the panels in your ads, but they need to have access to sunlight. Associated with pollution. We know although the pollution related to solar energy system is far less compared to other source of energy. Solar energy can be associated with little form of pollution during transportation and installation of solar system have been associated with some emission of greenhouse gases. There are also some toxic materials and hazardous products used during the manufacturing process of solar photovoltaic system which can indirectly affect the environment. Nevertheless, energy that is solar energy pollutes for less than the other alternative energy resources like fossil fuel burning. And the next demerits or drawback of the solar energy that scarcity of materials. So certain solar technologies require rare materials in their production. This however is primarily a problem for PV technology that is photovoltaic technology rather than CSP technology. It is inability of current production to meet the future demand. Many of the rare materials are byproducts of the other process rather than the focus of the targeted mining effort. So all these are the demerits of the solar energy that is obtained by making use of photovoltaic shell. The next part of this uh, fourth unit that is fuel shell. Already we discussed uh, hydrogen oxygen fuel shell but is, it is an application of the production of the hydrogen. So here we are discussing in detail fuel shells. We know fuel is nothing but any combustible substance which upon combustion in presence of uh, air or oxygen it produces energy like uh, hydrogen, methane, ethane, butane etc. So a fuel shell is an electrochemical shell that converts the chemical energy of a fuel and an oxidizing agent of an oxygen into electricity through a pair of redox reaction. The fuel shell combines fuel and oxygen to produce electricity, heat. The fuel shells are often compared to batteries. Both fuel shell and battery converts the energy produced by a chemical reaction into usable electric power. But the efficiency of the fuel shell is more than the batteries. However, the fuel shell will produce electricity as long as fuel is supplied at the anode, never losing its charge. Fuel shells are a promising technology for use as a source of heat and electricity for building and as an 
electrical power source, for electric motors, propelling vehicles, etc. And these fuel cells operate best on pure hydrogen. The fuel is very pure, its efficiency is very high. But fuels like natural gas, methanol or even gasoline can be also reformed to produce the hydrogen which is required for fuel cells. So some fuel cells even can be fueled directly with methanol without using a reformer. So what are the main advantages of fuel cells? As if you compare that fuel cell with other energy resources, the first one that the energy conversion rate is very high. So conversion of the fuel into energy is very high. Second, they operate at very, I mean very silently. So the fuel used are not much expensive by making use of uh, less costly fuels can generate electricity. The cell has high energy density. Then it produces harmless byproducts. The byproducts formed during the reaction is yes, harmless. Recharging of cell is not required. It is just an energy conversion system, it converts fuel into electricity. It will not store the energy, it converts. So until you are supplying the fuel, you will get the electricity. And the maintenance cost, maintenance cost is very very less. So all these are the merits of the fuel shell. And what are the limitations or demerits of the fuel cells. So the demerits, the first one, the power output is moderate and uh, electrodes are very costly. We are using uh, costly electrodes like platinum, palladium electrodes, uh, say silver electrode, etc. Fuels are to be stored in tanks under very high pressure in tanks. So all these are the some demerits. And uh, if uh, fuel is not in pure form, the efficiency of this fuel shell is also less. And how you are going to classify the fuel shell? That is the classification of the fuel shells. The first one direct fuel shells. So here hydrogen is fed directly as a fuel at the anode. Indirect fuel shells, the active fuel is obtained from a source and then oxidized. For example, if you consider the hydrogen is obtained from hydrothermal cracking and then it is used as a fuel. Regenerative fuel shells, fuel is used repeatedly through regeneration energy is consumed in the regeneration. So fuel is regenerated from the products by thermal or electrical, photochemical or radiochemical methods. So here, so fuel is repeatedly regeneration process is to be obtained. So based on the type of the electrolytes that is used in fuel cells, they are classified into different categories. So in the fuel cell what happens? Anode and cathodes are separated by an electrolyte and based upon the type of the electrolyte that is used in fuel cells, so fuel cells are classified into alkali or alkaline fuel cells. So alkaline fuel cells, so operate on compressed hydrogen and oxygen, they generally make use a solution of potassium hydroxide in water as their electrolyte 
and efficiency of such a fuel shell is uh, nearly about 70 percent and the operating temperature as high as 250 degree Celsius. By making use of uh, 85 percent weight percent KOH and at lower temperature say less than 120 degree Celsius we may use 35 to 50 percent weight percent of KOH and uh, it, is it was observed alkali shells were used in Apollo spacecraft to provide both electricity and drinking water they required pure hydrogen fuel so in this spacecraft they carried hydrogen and oxygen and uh, these two are supplied at anode and cathode it produced water along with the electricity the water that is formed during this process is used for drinking purpose and uh, the electricity used for their work next second one that is uh, molten carbonate fuel shells I repeat molten carbonate fuel shells so what happens molten carbonate fuel shells uh, we call it MCFC they make use of high temperature compounds of the salt like uh, sodium or potassium uh, sorry sodium or magnesium carbonates chemically that carbonates as an electrolytes and uh, efficiency of uh, such uh, fuel shells is in the range of 60 to 80 percent and the operating temperature for such fuel shells say about 600 to 700 degree Celsius so as these cells operate in the range of 600 to 700 degree Celsius the high temperature limits the damage from carbon monoxide poisoning of the shell it limits it prevents the poisoning of carbon monoxide to the cell and waste heat during formed here can also recycle to make an additional electricity so the nickel electrode which is used here are say inexpensive compared to other electrodes like platinum electrodes used in other shells next one a phosphoric acid fuel shell phosphoric acid fuel shells or uh, PAFC they make use of uh, phosphoric acid as an electrolyte and efficiency of uh, such shells ranges from 40 to 80 percent and operating temperature is in between 120 to 200 degrees Celsius and here in this uh, phosphoric acid fuel shells we are making use of platinum as a catalyst for both anode and cathode water vapor pressure is minimized due to the use of concentrated acid here and these PAFC tolerate carbon monoxide concentration of about 1.5 percent which broadens the choice of the fuel they can use the next one proton exchange membrane that is PEM fuel shell proton exchange membrane fuel shells work with a polymer electrolyte in the form of a thin permeable sheet what happens a very thin sheet of the polymer is used and these membranes are sup having superior conducting character for the protons and polymer membranes are typically used 
when the operating temperature of the fuel shell is less than or below 120. And here in proton exchange membrane fuel shell catalysts such as uh, platinum are used in order to adsorb the fuel. Adsorption of the fuel that is supplied at the anode will enhance in presence of a catalyst like platinum. And efficiency of such cells is about near 40 to 50 percent and operating temperature say near about 80 degrees Celsius. And here as we are using a polymer that is solid flexible electrolyte will not leak, will not crack and these cells operate at a low enough temperature to make them very suitable for uh, in our home in our car, but the fuel must be purified and platinum catalyst is used on both sides of the membrane, so which will enhance the cost of the cell. Next solid oxide fuel shell, SOFC, solid oxide fuel shells. So, these uh, solid oxide fuel shells use a hard ceramic compound of metals like uh, calcium or zirconium oxides as an electrolyte. So here ionic conduction takes place by oxygen. The anode in this fuel is uh, cobalt zirconium oxide compound or nickel zirconium oxide compound and cathode is uh, strontium doped uh, lanthanum manganese or manganese oxide compound and efficiency of this cell is uh, nearly about 60 percent and operating temperature are about 650 to 1000 degrees Celsius. At such high temperature, a reform is not required to extract hydrogen from the fuel and waste heat can be recycled to make additional electricity. However, the high temperature limits the application of these SOFC and they tend to be rather large while solid electrolytes cannot leak, they can crack. Next classification, how these fuel cells are classified based upon temperature, based on operating temperature. We discussed how they classify based on the type of the electrolyte. Now, based upon the operating temperature. The fuels are classified into low temperature, intermediate temperature and high temperature fuel shells. So low temperature fuel shells where the operating temperature is less than 100 degrees Celsius. Example hydrogen oxygen fuel shell, operating temperature well less. So intermediate temperature fuel cell where the temperature is nearly about in between 100 to 500 degrees Celsius. The best example for intermediate temperature fuel cells that is phosphoric acid fuel cells. High temperature fuel cells where the temperature is more than 500 degrees Celsius. The best example for high temperature fuel shells that is solid oxide fuel shells. Next one based upon the fuel that is supplied at the anode, the fuel cells are classified into different categories that is based on the fuel which is supplied at the anode. So hydrogen as a fuel you can call H2O2 fuel cell is the best example. 
So, hydrocarbons as a fuel. So, the best example for these that is methanol oxygen fuel shell where methanol is an hydrocarbon which is supplied at the anode and oxygen is supplied at the cathode. Reformate gases that is H2 plus CO that is hydrogen and carbon monoxide acts as a fuel example solid oxide fuel shells. So sodium amalgam as a fuel you know amalgam is nothing but a mixture of uh, metal with mercury. So sodium amalgam as a fuel example sodium amalgam fuel shell. So based upon the fuel we can classify it into different categories. So, I would like to discuss the one best example for the fuel shell that is methanol oxygen fuel shell. We are not using ethanol as a fuel because uh, ethanol is used for drinking purpose. Instead of ethanol, we are using methanol as a fuel in methanol oxygen fuel shell. Methanol oxygen fuel shell. It is used for the preparation of some beverages. Yes, but this is not used for the preparation of beverages. So, so therefore, it is to be used as a fuel in fuel shells. The first, so methanol oxygen fuel shell. And this methanol oxygen fuel shell make use of I say either alkali or acid as an electrolyte. You make use of an acid like sulfuric acid or an alkali. But the use of acidic medium is found to be more efficient. And also methanol is relatively cheap and easily available fuel. With less carbon content, it has got easily oxidizable OH group. Due to the presence of easily oxidizable OH group and uh, less cost of this methanol, make a prominent fuel for fuel shell. So, this is the block diagram for the methanol oxygen fuel shell. So, this is an anode, this is an anode, okay. So, this is the cathode. So, this anode, this whole part, this is filled with uh, uh, platinum powder or palladium, it act as a catalyst. And these platinum or palladium act as a catalyst. They help for the adsorption of the fuel over the anode. Adsorption, that is nothing but surface accumulation. So, I repeat, in methanol oxygen fuel shell, anodes are made of uh, porous nickel and pores of the anode are filled with are impregnated with platinum or palladium powder and they help for the adsorption of the methanol or methyl alcohol. And cathode, this is the cathodic part, is also a porous nickel electrode. The pores of the nickel are filled with uh, silver and which will enhance the adsorption of the oxygen. Here we are supplying oxidant that is nothing but oxygen. Here we are supplying methanol. So this is an inlet for the methanol or methyl alcohol 
and uh, that will be adsorbed on the surface of this uh, anode and uh, excess along some byproduct will come through this and this is an inlet for the oxygen through this and oxygen is uh, supposed to enter. So what happens? I repeat. So anodes in case of methanol oxygen fuel cells are made up of porous nickel sheets and uh, pores of the anode are impregnated with, I mean filled with electrocatalyst like platinum or palladium. They are deposited over the anode which will enhance the adsorption capacity and uh, cathode is also an porous nickel sheet and pores of the cathode are filled with silver. So, a membrane is placed adjacent to the cathode which prevents the diffusion. So, this uh, strip, yellow strip represents the membrane. So, membrane is placed adjacent to the cathode to prevent the diffusion of the methanol into the cathode. It prevents the diffusion of the methanol that is uh, fuel into the cathode. So, thus the fuel that is nothing but methanol which is an hydrocarbon and oxidant that is supporting gas for combustion that is said say oxygen and the electrolyte here used is uh, sulfuric acid. I said we can use either KOH or H2SO4 as an electrolyte but KOH is not used as an electrolyte as it reacts with carbon dioxide which is formed during the reaction and get converted into carbonate. During the course of this reaction, there is a formation of carbon dioxide. We use potassium hydroxide as an electrolyte and that potassium hydro hydroxide combines with CO2, carbon dioxide and it get converted to carbonates. Therefore, KOH cannot be used if sulfuric acid is used as an what you call electrolyte. And also it uh, decreases the conductivity of an electrolyte as well as efficiency. Yes, if uh, say carbonates are so formed they decreases the conductance or conductivity of the electrolyte and also it decreases the efficiency of the shell. So, how it work? How this uh, methanol oxygen fuel shell will work? So, what happens at the cathode? Methanol undergoes oxidation and it leads to the formation of carbon dioxide methanol which is formed uh, so which sorry methanol which is supplied at the anode so undergoes oxidation and it leads to the formation of the carbon dioxide so thus carbon dioxide is formed along with electrons you call this as a reaction one so that is nothing but oxidation which occurs at the anode this is the reaction occurs at the anode The electrons they flow towards the cathode and are responsible for the electrical output. And at the cathode, as we are supplying oxygen continuously, the oxygen get reduced in presence of uh, H plus ions. So these oxygen takes up uh, so electrons. So, I repeat, uh, so these uh, electrons uh, it will take up, yes, they get converted into carbon dioxide along with this one. So, here I am to shelling, <coughs> it will take up these electrons and get converted into CO2 plus O2. And uh, when you combine the first and second reaction, yes. So, here what happens? Methanol will produce 
carbon dioxide along with electrons. So these electrons are taken up by the oxygen presence of H plus. So here now six electrons it will take and it will form carbon dioxide along with water. So this is the oxidation reaction occurs at the anode, reduction reaction occurs at the cathode. Combining these two, the net reaction is methanol plus oxygen. It gives carbon dioxide, water along with energy. And this energy is used for our work. The maximum theoretical voltage that is obtained from this methanol oxygen fuel shell is 1.18 volt at 25 degrees Celsius. Maximum voltage and the potential developed is a mixture potential or mixed potential involving the reaction of formaldehyde and formic acid species. The catalyst is easily poisoned by COH species, carbon hydroxide species. So what are the merits of these fuel shells? Merits of methanol oxygen fuel shell. What are the merits of methanol oxygen fuel cell? So the first one, methanol fuel shell do not require cooling like other batteries it not in need of uh, cooling other batteries are in need so eliminate the need of spacious cooling system cooling is not just required second one methanol fuel system are available as either stand alone unit similar in size to a small refrigerator for applications like base stations and third one methanol fuel shells have few moving parts or movable parts which reduce the need for regular maintenance easily you can detach that one and you can make the repair like that Unlike uh, generators, methanol fuel do not uh, use combustion. Therefore, there is no production of uh, oxides of nitrogen, oxides of sulfur or particulate emissions. Means, it will not uh, say emits any oxides of the nitrogen, oxides of the sulfur are particulate emissions. And this methanol fuel shell operate as long as fuel is available until you are supplying the fuel at the anode or getting electricity. So, and 8 hours, for 1 hour, for 3 days, etc, etc. So, extended run time can be enabled by storing the appropriate amount of fuels on site. You can store the required quantity of fuel based upon your requirement. You make the storage of the fuel. The next advantage that is the fuel that is here we are using methanol as a fuel. So this fuel that is methanol which is required that is industrial grade methanol. And this industrial grade methanol is readily available and fairly very cheap. And it is very easy to store and uh, it is possible to store with uh, lower infrastructure which is required compared to that of the hydrogen. Next methanol is less explosive, 
less flammable than hydrogen or gasoline. So, if you compare methanol and uh, hydrogen, so methanol is uh, less prone for the explosion, less flammable compared to gasoline, etc. Compared to compressed hydrogen, the fuel methanol eff efficiently stores energy in a compact format easily transportable that is safe for stationary or mobile storage. Methanol storage drastically reduce the weight of the fuel shell. If uh, the weight of the fuel shell also reduced because if you store them in uh, supply the methanol at the fuel shells. And what are the demerits or what are the drawbacks of this methanol oxygen? It is having some demerits or it has some drawbacks. Let us see some demerits or drawbacks of the methanol oxygen fuel shell. The one is a methanol that is used in the methanol oxygen fuel shell. <coughs> Sometimes methanol pass through the electrolyte without uh, reacting. Thus, uh, it reduces the efficiency, the produce a low power density, methanol can corrode, it is responsible for the corrosive action of different parts of the fuel shells. So, these are the demerits, some demerits of the fuel shell. And where you are using this uh, methanol oxygen fuel shell. So, I am here using uh, direct methanol fuel shell application. A potential area of uh, application of direct methanol fuel shells is uh, low power, so you can produce uh, 20 watt power source for electronic components such as notebook, video cameras, DVD players, cell phones, some medical devices, hearing aids like at this time the application of uh, direct methanol fuel cells as power sources for electric vehicles is very a remote say, substantial or uh, further progress are also made in the design and uh, prototyping this one DMFC stacks for portable and auxiliary power applications. So, all these are the important applications of the methanol oxygen fuel cells. So, this completes the fourth unit of uh, engineering chemistry. I would express my thanks to the VTV section program coordinator for providing me an opportunity to share my knowledge on this topic. So, I just uh, want to say some questions related to this topic how the question may ask on this. So, under green chemistry they may ask you the question like define green chemistry and state any six principles of the green chemistry. The second question they may ask you Justify the statement that biocatalyzed reactions are a green synthesis. Third question they may ask you explain microwave irradiated synthesis with suitable examples. 
They may ask you the question also. What are solventless reaction? Mention the important advantages of solventless reactions. Then they may ask you the question under hydrogen production how hydrogen is produced by making use of solar energy along with uh, water that is photoelectric splitting of water. Next give the construction and working of photovoltaic shell how the photovoltaic shell is constructed and how it works so under fuel shell they may ask you the question discuss the construction and working of methanol oxygen fuel shell right its uh, merits and demerits these are the few questions under this fourth unit so thank you thank you one and all